My name is Grant Fritchie. I'm the Scary DBA. I work for Redgate Software, and this is my contact information. If you were in the last session, you've already seen this, but I warned you then I was going to do this again. So if you have questions, I would really like you to get in touch with me. I've got my email, my Twitter, my blog. It's all right here. If you've got a question, please get in touch. Ask me those questions. I will respond to them all. I've never not responded. It, it, you know, it might take me a day or two because I'm on the road or traveling, um, but I absolutely will respond to your questions. Uh, I had a guy, uh, we, were, we just did a presentation in um, another city here in England that's escaped me. Um, and um, then we traveled to Cardiff, and I'm sitting in Cardiff checking my email, and this guy asked me a question from the, from the previous presentation. I responded, walked out the door, and he was standing there going, hey, you know, I just sent you an email. I said, no, no, I just sent you an email. <laughs> and he was very happy. So it, it, I will absolutely give you, get back to you. So please, please, if you've got a question after this, get in touch. Guys, who here? Why? Who here is a developer? Awesome. Excellent. Guess what? I'm not picking on developers in this session. Who is a DBA? Some of you raised your hands twice. That's not fair. OK. <laughs> Who's in management? We will be picking on managers. Yeah. And the cheers come up from the crowd. OK, so real question. Who thinks that they are absolutely not in the cloud and will never go to the cloud? Not a single hand. Wow, the world has changed. Usually you get several people going, yeah, there's no way my company will ever put anything in the cloud ever, 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 ever. There's no way, no how, no thing at possible at all, ever. Cool. Do you run vir virtual machines? Oh, God, yeah. They're everywhere. Who hosts them? Oh, we host them on VMware. Oh, you mean in the cloud? Well, no, that doesn't count. Sure it does. <laughs> Are you on Amazon Web Services? Hey, look, you're in the cloud. People think cloud and they think Azure. I'm going to show Azure today. Why? Hey, I'm a Microsoft MVP. They pay me. No, they don't pay me. Redgate pays me. I'm going to show Azure. I'm going to show SQL Server 16. We're going to talk about some of the new technologies. But the fact of the matter is, and, and the room agrees, no one, no one has, did not raise their hands. The future is in the cloud, partly. There are perfectly good reasons for not going to the cloud. You've got massive, massive transaction throughput for some particular you know, structured data system, and you need a very specific set of hardware in order to support that. Chances are you're not going to go to some generic cloud server. Understood. Absolutely. But everybody's moving there. The reason I was excited about having developers in the room is because this is developer heaven. This is glorious. Developers, DBAs, be quiet. Developers, how often do your DBAs tell you no? How often have you gone into the DBA and say, hey, man, I'm working on this new project. Can, I need access to a server so I can create some databases. I'm going to do it on my own, cool, OK? Because I don't want to go through you for this. And the DBAs go, no, you can't do that. Go to the cloud. Go to Azure. Set up a SQL database on Azure. Platform as a service. You can have a database up and running that fast. You can do anything you want to it. He'll never know. <laughs> you can completely bypass your DBA. Set up everything. Get it all ready to rock. Show it off at the company meeting and have the DBA go, is that storing data in structured storage? Oh, yeah, it's going to Azure. You have to maintain it because everyone liked it. You don't need to worry about the DBA anymore. Now, DBAs, who's angry with me? So you've got two choices. One, you can beat me up, so maybe I'll shut up. Or two. Get on board, guys. The future is partly in the cloud. We are going to the cloud. 
Developers are going to bypass you. I told them to. And everyone listens to me. That's a joke. No one listens to me. That's OK. We're going to the cloud. It's going to be there. So we want to follow along. Through great effort, Redgate is actually on board. We are there. We've already got cloud services. We've already got cloud software. We believe in it. We're going there. So let's talk about Azure SQL Database. Platform as a service. Beautiful, beautiful thing, especially for you know, quick development, easy stuff, setting things up. Scalability, you know, like the whole new data lake. Bingo, anybody? No? The data lake processes that you can do within Azure. Um, Hadoop. Anybody get a bingo? Trying to be helpful. I'm trying to be helpful here. Anybody playing? Who's not? Who's playing? OK, only a few. All good stuff, right? All mechanisms that are going to allow you to do more. Now, <laughs> this is the fun part. Let's see if we can get connected. <laughs> because it wasn't working a minute ago. <laughs> oh, yay. I feel so much better now. Awesome. Because what I'm doing is I am actually using Azure. Um, I, I figured if I was going to um, talk about this partly cloudy future, that I should um, demo a partly cloudy future. And hopefully this thing's going to be helpful to me. Come on, baby. This is what we're running on, so. Hmm. So one of the most interesting things about the uh, Azure and cloud experience is connectivity really matters. <laughs> OK, there it goes. I upped the server to get to a bigger machine that I don't think it took yet. I was supposed to, I got a lot of questions at the end of the last session. I was supposed to get this set up between sessions and didn't quite make it. While these things start. So what I'm going to show you today, assuming this actually ever runs, <laughs> is I'm running on Azure VMs right now. Um, from my Azure VMs, I'm going to connect to Azure uh, Platform as a Service, Azure SQL Database, uh, which is a beautiful thing. Create a database, you instantly get three copies of that database on three different servers inside the Azure cloud. You can't see them. They're not there. But what it is, it's high availability. One of them breaks, it fails over to the other two. There's a synchronous communication going on between all three all the time. Further, you also get geosynchronous. So you can have it set up you know, one locally here, because there's, there's Azure, it's uh, over in Ireland, I believe, is where, the, where they've got the data center. Um, you have one here, one over on, in the, on the European side, and then another one all the way around over in China someplace, and have them, have them synchronizing between all three data sources. It's great. Oh, cool. Woo! It's running. I feel so much better. Anybody here see, see SQL Compare before? Raise your hands nice and high, because there's some of the development guys around here, and they would just love to see that most of the room is using SQL Compare. Awesome. So I'm going to connect it to blah, 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 blah. one second. Bad presenter. I did not set up Zoom it. You can tweet. Oh, I don't have Zoom it on the machine. OK, well, let's we'll go back to the Windows. I know. Don't tweet that. We'll go to the Windows one. Come on, baby. There it goes. I'm connecting up to Azure training.database.windows.net. This is a Azure SQL Server database. Um, I've got AdventureWorks 2014 already on there. I'm going to compare it to my local machine. I can compare it to whatever machine I want. I'm going to compare it to TestDB. Hit compare now. And it didn't like that connection. Why didn't it like that connection? Hang on one second. Oh, the Azure now supports AD connections, but I have not set up a virtual network to make that connection. So I'm still connecting through. So 
SQL logins. There we go. So all I'm showing you here, this is the simplest demo, probably the simplest one I'm going to run. All I'm showing you here is the SQL compare connects up to Azure, it runs database connections, and it will run a full database compare between the Azure SQL database and the underlying database. Is it fast? No. And it's not because SQL compare is slow, it's because I'm running it, one, on a, on a somewhat small VM, and two, across the cloud. So this is not running real quick, but it's, a, it's not the nature of our product, it's the nature of working in a cloud system. And that's okay. It's just something you get used to, right? There's going to be certain connectivity, certain types of data transfer that's going to be a little slower than normal. But that's all right. In the meantime, this thing is running, and it's completed, And once the reports come back and everything's working, I've got a full set of objects that are only inside of one database, objects that are only inside the other database, and objects that are in both databases but different. Just like SQL Compare was, you know, built for running against Azure. Hey, shock, it is. So the beautiful thing here is, is that if you guys are ready to start moving into the platform as a service, if you're ready to take advantage of that high availability, we're ready to support you. We want to support you. We're hooked in. Further, my favorite tool in the world, bar none, oops, mouse is acting funny. Stop that. Can I answer it? Nobody ever lets me answer it. Let's go VM, the little VM that could. Okay, cool. Now this is um, uh, SQL Server Management Studio. Anybody ever seen this before? <laughs> what? <laughs> so my favorite tool in the world. Oh, and by the way, you ready for this? In Azure, use AdventureWorks, right? Can we do this in Azure? Anybody know? Oh no, not supported the switch between databases in Azure. Nuts, well now we've already made the connection in, in um, using one, so we can't switch between the two. It doesn't work. Unless you're me and you've poked at the darn thing until you found a way to get around it. And in fact you can, you can cheat and now we're actually using the Azure AdventureWorks database. There, you got something for free. Did you know that? Did you know that? You can do it. I know, Microsoft didn't know it either. <laughs> and when the Microsoft guy goes, what'd you just do? <laughs> what, you just type it in here and it switches to the other database. You can't do that. Yeah, you can. Worked just fine. <gasps> Nobody else is excited. No, who, who doesn't use prompt? Raise your hand really high because I don't like you. <laughs> okay, so only a third of the room is not using prompt. The other two thirds of the room didn't just get, yeah, prompt worked. Or you just sort of expect it. Yeah, of course prompt's going to work. It didn't used to. <laughs> Believe me, who, any developers in here who got one of my phone calls? <laughs> No, no, but none of the developers are all hiding. Because I called. Prompt isn't working. Yeah, it is. It's not working in Azure. Well, we, we never set it up for Azure. Fix it. And they did. So it works. OK, any questions? I'm going to get out of this. We'll start talking 2016. Who's excited about SQL Server 2016? Why? Ah, uh, cool. Oh, oh, hang on. I've I got a couple more points to make about Azure SQL Database. Um, this is really important. Microsoft's doing all their development in Azure first. For example, SQL Server 2016. 
one of the coolest, most wonderful things coming out in SQL Server 2016, and I'm excited about it, I'm very excited about it, is Query Store. Very, very exciting. It's already in Azure. It's done. It's online, in production, in Azure, today. Whoa. Cool. I'm not even going to demo Query Store today. It's not one of, one of the things I'm going to go through, because there's, anyway. It is so cool, and it's available now, because they do everything there first. It's just SQL Server, for the most part. <laughs> not completely SQL Server. There's some underlying stuff that's a little weird, and you want to be make sure that you're running V12. If you're not running V12, Azure is very painful. But once you're on V12, Azure is a glory. And yes, you can create databases on the, on the previous version. Don't do it. Just don't. Just skip right past it. Keep going. Go to V12. Everyone okay with that? Awesome. We're going to talk 2016. Um, earthed, right? Cloud versus Earth, right? Everyone? No? I knew it wouldn't work, but I had to try. The Earth version of SQL Server. I'm breaking Rodney here. <laughs> this is awesome. Somebody tweet that. <laughs> Grant broke Rodney. Cool. In memory. Who's excited about, oh, by the way, and that's another bingo thing. Who's excited about in memory? Three, four, five hands. Sad. Okay, let me ask you this. Who here monitors their weight stats very regularly? Raise your hands nice and high, just so I can see. Wow. Okay, keep your hands up. Who here is a DBA? I didn't say a DBA and you monitor weight stats. So here's a DBA. <laughs> the DBAs are not monitoring weight stats. Oh, okay, cool. Well, that might be why you're not excited about in memory. <laughs> Because my next question was going to be, who here has latch weights as one of their top weights? OK, so, so a few hands went up that did not go up as being excited about in memory. And that is the exciting point about in memory. In memory is really wonderful if your latch weights are your number one weight stat. If you're worried about latch weights, if you're going, God, how can we get rid of latches? Why are latches such a problem? Because most of the rest of us are going, latches aren't a problem. Because it's not for most people. Most people are not looking at latch weights. But if you are, if you're looking at latch weights, in memory is a glory. The only issue is it doesn't support the entire stack of T-SQL. Oh, and you've got to spend, well, I was going to say something extremely rude, large amounts of money on hardware and on Microsoft licensing because it is enterprise only. Yeehaw. Who here is enterprise? Oh, cool. Well, then you guys don't care. Half the room. The other half the room is going, oh, man, enterprise. I don't want to buy that. So. 2016, enhancements. You're going, alter? Alter is an enhancement? Yes. Yeah, prior to 2016, you know what we had to do? Drop and recreate. Tables? Yes. Yeah, we had to drop tables and recreate them. Grant, doesn't that have an impact on data? Well, you know, little one, no big deal. But yeah, it supports alter now. <laughs> I mean, because no one ever actually changes tables, right? We get column store on in memory. Now who's excited? Same hands. OK, you're really making me depressed here. Who's? Okay, who is predominantly and or moving to 2012 or better? Okay, who's excited about column store? Wow, 
God, this is so cool. Okay, let me ask you another question. Who here has ever written a group by T sequel? <laughs> okay, so all the hands went up. Everyone should be excited about column store because if you're writing group by, if you're writing aggregate queries, this is your baby. And now we've got it inside of TC, inside of us in memory. Therefore, we have a column store indexes in memory, and that means we can do group by against our in memory tables and get good performance. Because in memory grouping by and any kind of aggregate functions against in memory prior to this, while the in memory fu um, functionality is so blazingly fast, you kind of can't see it, we could measure the differences <laughs> when we started doing aggregate queries. But we, now we've got column store. And we've got a whole broader T-SQL footprint. So all this additional stuff that didn't have before, just in general, you know, order by, um, some other fun things that, you know, we kind of use occasionally inside of queries, right? Anybody use order by? Yeah. Okay, cool. Let's switch over here. Behave. Awesome. Wow, it's not behaving real well. Come on, baby. Please stop. This is from yesterday. We did some impromptu statistics classes. Awesome. All right. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, uh, well, actually, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to make it so you guys can see. People are in the back going, what the heck's going on? There, how's that? Thank you. I'm going to drop this database test DB too. Then I'm going to recreate it. I'm going to add uh, alter the database, add a file group for in memory. Uh, so it does memory optimized data. I'm going to add a file for doing the in memory database. Okay, everyone all right with that? Basically setting this up so we can play with in memory stuff from scratch. Should only take a second. Hey, hey, look at that, and I was right. Now that we have an in-memory database, let's go over here to the in-memory setup. Perf tuning is the database, or do no, we put it into uh, test DB2, right? Oh no, I've got another one here where I do this one. Okay. Um, so what I'm doing, oh, I, did, I, did, I messed up. I didn't change that second script. I'm so stupid. Okay, so this one, <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I freely admit it. This one sets us up. And creates tables. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, cool. That's a t uh, TV show from America called Jeopardy, and that's the weight music on Jeopardy. I want to show you just one little thing about it, about using in memory. If I run this query, this is querying from one AdventureWorks database and pulling data into the other. Okay, so let's just. We're not going to measure it. We're not going to put on extended events. Everyone uses extended events, right? Lie to me. OK. We're not going to put on extended events and measure it. We're just going to, we're just going to look at it. And it's going to take you know, a second, two seconds, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. OK. And it moved 19,000 rows. OK? Now, I'm inserting from that little, we did you know, an insert select. We created that. We're going to insert from that one into the in-memory table. Okay? This is this is the, the lowest level, stupidest, most ridiculous test known to mankind. You ready? Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> In memory is fast, right? I, I mean, it's just, you know, I know. Nobody cares. I actually, I'm serious, I like that script. Um, I paused there just to show it. Now, now I'm gonna just gonna go ahead and recreate everything else. We'll let this run. Okay, no, don't run the cleanup yet. That would be bad. Okay, so now that's just all the rest of the stuff that's running. It's creating a whole bunch of other tables and inserting the data. And it's, what it's doing is creating local staging table and then taking it from local staging table and inserting into the in-memory table because you cannot do cross-database queries against in-memory tables. Grant, in memory sucks. Well, it's just that's how it is. Okay, and that finish? Awesome. Cool. Now then, we'll go over to here and we'll use perf tuning. And so, everybody ready? Alter worked. Seriously, in 2014, that would fail. This is 2016, it succeeded. That's a huge win. Okay, nobody's excited. <laughs> what? <laughs> so earlier, I also created a, an in memory um, store procedure. Right, you guys know natively compiled store procedures? Awesome! They are so fast. I mean, blazingly, blindingly, incredibly fast. By the way, in 2014, no alter. You have to drop and recreate. 2016, I can alter. I know no one's excited about this, but God, I am. That is so wonderful. I know you're all going, yeah, you're an American. You get excited about in the morning. Well, yeah, we do. Okay, I'm going to do an experiment. The developers told me not to do this. <laughs> but I'm going to do it anyway. If it blows up, it's my fault, okay? Not anyone else's. I'm going to create a table using a column store in, in memory. I was told not to do this, so I'm doing it anyway. Is there anybody from Redgate in here? Close your eyes. Colin's out there arranging for me to get fired anyway from the last session. I told you guys not to buy our product. It was a joke, because I actually explained why you wanted to buy our product, but. Let's go back to here. Let's open up projects. Let's see if this works. <coughs> ah, it did. Oh, cool. They've updated it. They fixed it. Awesome. <laughs> it's working. So what we've got now is, is that I've just done a compare between my two databases. I created the, the testDB2, which is an in-memory database, and the perf tuning, which is an in-memory database. I ran compare against them, and I picked up the column store index. <laughs> so SQL compare supports new in-memory 2016 functionality, and more than I thought it was going to support. I knew it supported alter, um, so I didn't, I didn't demo that, but uh, I just wanted to see if it would support the other. Cool. And so it can move all the stuff over and it will work. I'm not going to bother running it, but you guys can see what's going on. Everyone okay with that? Awesome. Let's get out of in-memory. Any other questions on the, the new enhancements on in-memory for 2016? Awesome. Something new else new in 2016, temporal tables. These are great. Is anybody else doing um, insurance? Now, only three, four hands. Um, when I was doing insurance, the way an insurance policy worked was 
fascinating, actually. So you say, okay, well, I, you know, let's say I'm a business and I own a building. And I go to insure my building. We say, okay, cool, we're going to go look at your building. Yeah, well, you know, you've got the right cumbrel of fire extinguishers and sprinklers and all this stuff, and your building's worth this much money, and we'll insure it for this much, which is not the replacement cost, but hey, that's your problem, not ours. Um, and you have to pay us this much for it. Cool. We sign a contract, off it goes. Gets stored in our database. Then you call us up and say, oh, by the way, I didn't mention that inside of our database is a data warehouse, and I mean inside of our database, inside of our building is a data, is a data warehouse um, and some servers that you guys didn't inspect. Um, we need to add that into the policy. <sighs> Crap. And it has to be retroactively uh, effective from the date of the policy start. Okay, so now what I have to do is I have to go in and I have to insert a new row into my database that's saying that your value of your system is this much. Effective on this date, but I can't throw away the old effective date in case you're calling me because you just had a fire. And I'm going to have to go in and figure out what version of the data I have when we go to the lawyers to t say, well, no, they say the contract shows that they covered this data warehouse that burned down five minutes ago. When we didn't know that the thing was there at all, let alone the fact that when you called us, it was on fire. <laughs> so we had to version every single row going into the system. Every single row going in, we had to have a version of it. Now we created a method for doing that, it involved creating a version table and then marrying the version table to all the other tables underneath so that every single one had a version ID. So when we did an insert, and if it was one row, 50 rows, one table, 50 tables, each one got a version and an effective date and all this other stuff. <sighs> and querying that was entertaining. Give, you know, show, me, show me all the rows for a given effective date. No, 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 show me all the rows that are currently effective. No, 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 show me just all the latest rows. Three different reports that were run all the time. Insane. Now, finally, Microsoft has built this thing called temporal tables, built-in version data. It just versions it right out of the gate. It's great. It does create a secondary system table. So it maintains data in the secondary table, and you can see that occurring underneath the covers. It has massive implications for storage and access. Depending on how you write your queries, depending on the stuff that you're bringing back and forward, and most importantly, how much space do you have? This is a huge management headache coming our way. We need to be very on top of it, right? It's, it's yay, cool new toy, let's plug it in and go. Yes, but what implications does that have for our management? And hey, guess what? It changes how we run T-SQL. Oh, cool, goody. And, and by the way, if you write books on execution plans, it changes the way the execution plans come out in the book. So, guess who gets more work? <laughs> Yay, I'm excited. Not really. I just finished the first draft on the third edition of the book, and I don't want to go back and rewrite it again. So if you see Tony out there, say, Tony, finish up the editing on the execution plans book so Grant doesn't have to rewrite it anytime soon. <laughs> Any questions on this? Is anybody excited about this? One, two, three, four, five, six. You don't have to be. I'm not that excited about it. I think it's useful, but I think it's got implications. Let's play. Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah, no, no worse. I don't know. <laughs> I'm going to give you the, my best answer. He said, how would I, if you've already got you know, CDC, you've already got other kinds of change tracking, how would you integrate this with those others? I don't have a good answer for you right now. Um, I've only just started exploring the temporal tables. Um, I'm, I'm, I know how they work, but I have not dealt with some of the implications of what it would cause me to change if, for example, I was still maintaining that version data for, for insurance, what would I do differently with it? I don't have a good answer for you. Yes? 
That's a great question. Were you angling for like a prize or something? <laughs> it won't be the next slide, but it is going to be the next demo. So create table, temporal test, temporal test ID, primary key, my valve, our car, sysdate start, generate it always as row start, generate it always as row end, start and stop time, system start and stop time defined, and then period for system time. So you actually define how the information gets stored inside this thing, inside this temporal table, which has massive implications to your question. How does this, in, in, you know, how does this integrate? You start making decisions as soon as you create the table, because depending on what you set here, if it's start and end times are outside of a given range, you may not be able to integrate it with some of your existing data. I don't know. Again, I'm still, I'm still kind of, yeah, I'm definitely, you know, great way to put it. I'm getting my head around it. Hoo-hoo, I created a temporal table. Oh yeah, and I can alter temporal table. But I can tell it. to switch off. Right? I mean, it's, now what implications does that have? Does it, does it take away all the versions? Yeah. Do, does what I just did cause like major headaches if I was an insurance company? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. What I just did just now, I'm going to have long, long discussions with my boss, right? One of those meetings, you don't like those meetings, right? However, did it turn off that data? It did. But let's go back up to here. We've recreated it. Let's go over to here. Wrong server. Mouse is moving funny on this thing today, boy. Give me a second. Sorry, guys. Come on. Oh. The mouse is definitely acting funny. There we go. Keyboards works. No, no, I don't have zoom in on this one. I'm just using the windows. Oh, no. Nah, that doesn't. Because I'm zoomed out, it doesn't affect it um, normally. Oops, DBO. So notice, we've got a new behavior inside of Management Studio. Does everybody, hang on, people probably can't see that in the back. I'm looking right at it, I can see it. System versioned. Right, so it's marking the tables individually and, and keeping track of what they're doing. Let's zoom back out, take a look, and yeah, sure enough, it creates that system table and maintains that underneath. So it, it, the, the behavior here is completely radically changed from your standard table, okay? Is there anything good, anything bad, anything I'm like I'm telling you, run and fire, you know, no. Informational. You've got additional stuff, additional maintenance that you need to sweat. Do these things have statistics? Does that affect queryings? Yes. Does that mean I've got additional headaches I have to sweat? Yes. Hey, it's Microsoft, nothing's free. So, the question is, I wish I had a prize to give. Are temporal tables supported? Don't save, no. And the shortest possible answer is yes.
But let's take a quick look at it. One hundred fifty-nine objects that are identical, three that only exist in the one, and ooh, look at that! Oops, one second. There we go. Come on, baby. There it goes. It's picking up the underlying tables. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? It's a thing. I wouldn't say it's good or bad. But it is part of the system and it is picking them up and it's aware of the fact that these things exist. It will make sure that you've got synchronization across them. So you're not going to be dealing with a lack of these things. It's all there. Can you drop these individually? You can. If you turn off the uh, versioning first. Okay? Everyone all right with that? Yes? No. <laughs> if I turn off versioning as I did as I did for you guys, I can then drop the table and it goes away. But it did not drop the underlying system table. But when I turned versioning back on, it created a new system table using a new GUID. Yay, GUIDs. Who loves GUIDs? And who yeah, and, and the people who are saying I love GUIDs, you're developers, right? Because <laughs> DBAs are not GUID fans. Any other questions on temporal tables? Yes? Uh, is it time zone aware? I don't know. I believe so, yes, but I don't know. Um, good question. I don't know. Is it time zone aware was the question, and I think so, but I don't know that for a fact. I think internally it stores at UTC. Internally it stores at UTC. Yeah, I believe that's right, but, but I'm not sure if yeah, I don't know. I, I think you're right, and, and I'm just going to go with, I don't know, so I sound less like an idiot than normal. How do you purge that data? I don't know. <laughs> I believe you can just go in and delete directly from that table. Hang on, hang on. Oop. I'm game. Let's type in a demo and see what happens. Anybody else want to watch Grant make a fool of himself? <laughs> People are like, yeah, do it. OK, hang on one second. Because I'm not sure prompt picks this up, so I'm going to cheat. Well, hang on. What's the name of the table? MSSQL. MS. Ah, prompt picks it up. God, I love Redgate. <laughs> yeah, I can just go right to the table and delete. And because you can explore it, we, could, we can take a look at it. You, you can add a where clause. Yes. Yeah, that much I do know. If you want to purge, you go to the underlying system table to do the purge. If you delete from the other table, it'll delete it, but it's just deleting the rows that are there. Cool. I didn't know that, so it was cool to do the experiment. Thanks for asking. And thanks, everyone, for letting me screw up and try it out. And Prompt picked it up. OK, next thing in 2016. <sighs> okay, let me ask you this. DBAs, who's excited? Really? The DBAs are excited about JSON. Okay, you've got to tell me why. D JSON, not, not just excited about JSON. I understand why JSON's exciting. That's all you're giving me? <laughs> you want an infrastructure back end, and you're passing 
um, different objects from different parts of your system to store in your database, and you want it in a structured fashion, you don't want to be using XML because it's a pain in the ass. XML, XML is a pain in the ass. Tweet that, please. Um, yes, XML is a pain in the ass. And this is not? I know everybody's using JSON. I get it. It doesn't belong here. Put it in NoSQL. That's why we built it. I just, this makes me sad. Sir, please. <laughs> Job security for relational DBAs. Yeah, you know, I don't know. I mean, it's, <laughs> you know, how's it stored? It's stored as an Invarcar. Awesome. We couldn't use Invarcar Max. But okay, we've got JSON. Um, It's you know optimized for performance. It's not optimized for storage. What's that mean? That means that uh, it'll write it really quickly. It's going to read it really quickly. It ain't going to store it really quickly um, or efficiently. Right? The efficiencies of storage are really non-existent. Um, I don't know what to say about it. I'm bummed. I, <laughs> in case I'm not being blunt enough, <laughs> I'm not against JSON. I think JSON's awesome. I don't understand why it's going into my structured storage system. That's all. I'm just, anyway, another place where Grant is crying. Grant, did you say the same when they started putting XML in there? <sighs> Have you no, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't say the same thing when they started putting XML in because I had just come out of development at that time and I said, Cool, we can put XML in the database. It'll be awesome. And, 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 and then the blood pouring out of me. You know, for the years afterwards, um, and I learned better. Um, and I feel the same way about JSON now that I felt about XML after a few years. <laughs> <laughs> it's I just don't have any you know real excitement. Get some JSON. We're going to create a quick sort procedure, and we're going to get JSON out. Woo there you go, JSON. Everybody thrilled? <laughs> That's it. Done. That was, you know, that's the thing. Can I run compare against it? Yeah. Compare works, supports it. Why? Because it's in Varcar and a statement inside of the T SQL statement. It is just in Varcar. What have they done? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> they haven't done a darn thing. They've created this thing inside of a store procedure that spits out JSON if you want it. And you can write JSON to it. Cool. Is, then are you saying there's no way to query this in a structured way? You you, you can get into you can get into the JSON. Yeah, there's some JSON query stuff in there, but it, it's it's not you know it's not was it Flower and all that stuff uh, for X query. Which by the way, don't do that. Just. <laughs> Pardon? It's, it, it's in Varkar, so you have to tell it to pull it out as JSON. If I just run that same query and spit out data, it just spits out data. It, it's, it's stored as in Varkar. I mean, it, stretch table. Who's excited about this one? I am too. Ex one exception. Doesn't this, to a degree, I'm excited about it. I really am. But doesn't it, to a degree, feel like this is just a, a mechanism for making us pay for Azure? <laughs> just saying. It's beautiful. What it is, is, who's not heard of it, stretch tables? Oh, cool. Oh, good. Oh, excellent. This is great. Um, you might be excited later. I, I'm very excited. Most of you guys have never heard of it. OK, here's what it is. Stretch table. You create a stretch table. You create a table on 
Azure storage and on your local machine. And then you define how you would like the archive to work, and it will real time move data off your local machine to archive storage on Azure. But it will look like a single table. So you run a query against your table, and you say where something is in the last month, it run, reads it locally. You say where something is older than a month, assuming a month is your cutoff, it reads it against Azure. Now you go, well, God, Grant, that second query is going to be slow. <coughs> yeah. <laughs> but the first query is going to be blazingly fast. Is this for everyone? No. But let's say you're, you're collecting millions of rows every month. And most of your queries, and by most I mean the vast majority, you know, most, are against that one month of data. And you want that one month to run really fast. And then you don't want to pay for storing it, maintaining it, and all that other crap locally, especially because it affects your statistics. It affects your indexes. If you have a scan, it scans everything, right? But if we can make it so we run queries so that it only queries the local stuff, it's going to be very, very fast. And then we store it up on the far away stuff. And it goes, that's great. It's invisible to the users. They never see it. It just goes. Well, you know, except for performance issues. Yes? One thing I wasn't answering, Daryl, is it only Azure where you can create the remote table? Currently, it is only Azure. Yeah, you can't do it on uh, Amazon Web Storage. No, I mean, you, you can't just stick it on another archive server. So. No, it's, it's, it's like you read my mind. <laughs> Azure only. It's actually worked out really well today. Some of the questions that come up just bang on. Uh, and all the payments will be going out later. <laughs> Are there implications for indexing and statistics? Yes. Indexes um, that cross the threshold have to cross the threshold. Does that affect um, storage? Yes. Statistics that cross the threshold have to cross the threshold. Does that affect performance? Yes. Do you need to avoid crossing the threshold? Yes, as much as you can. The idea here is, is that this is an invisible archiving mechanism. So you want it to be able to query against that other stuff, but you want to make it as pain-free as possible. It's only really going to work if you've got the system where you don't query against the old stuff all the time. If you're querying in the old stuff all the time, this is going to be very, very painful. Very painful. 2016. This is all, yeah, this is all new stuff. This is all 2016. This is all magic. It's not released yet. Um, they still don't have a release date. Best guess for most people is um, March, April next year. Why? Because they already gave it a name. And no, I'm serious. <laughs> 2012 was released when? March. 2014 was released when? April 1st, by the way. April Fool's Day. <laughs> Interesting choice, but. Um, so when do we think 2016 is probably going to get released? March, April is our guess. So do they implement some kind of rolling uh, filter? It has a rolling, it, ha it implements rolling indexes and all that stuff for you. And it, it implements it and moves the data for you magically behind the scenes. It's, it's actually some really cool tech. It's just, it's got some serious implications that you kind of need to think through. Yes? Pardon? Why do we need it if we've got partitioning? Why do you need it if you've got partitioning? <sighs> it, well, I mean, it, short answer is it's another tool in the toolbox. I wouldn't say that it replaces partitioning. Um, maybe, depending on how you're using your partitioning. If your partitioning is uh, rolling, you know, rolling dates, but the data is only ever accessed for the rolling dates, and then everything else is off in a warehouse, yeah, no big deal. But if you want to have a live archive, as opposed to rolling data out, but you just want it to just, I just want to, main, I just want to maintain it. You know, I, it, it's like, yeah, we've got five terabytes of data, but it's only 100 gigs that we care about most of the time. Well, can we put the other 4.9 terabytes someplace else? Yes, we can. That's, that's, what, this is, that's what this does. And you know, it's just throw money at Microsoft. <laughs> <sighs> yeah.
Man, I knew that question was going to come up, and I'm not prepared for it. The question was, is, well, back up, where's that go? It's, you know, and I'm like, mm -hmm. <laughs> I don't know, you know? Oh, my mouse is battery. Right. Okay. So what he's saying is, is that there's there's back the backups on Azure handle the offsite data, and your local backup only backs up the local data. Effectively. That's that's my understanding. In a nutshell. Yeah. Okay. Good. That part I had not studied for, and I knew it was going to come up. I knew it was going to come up, and I should have studied for it, because I knew it was going to come up. One of the things we get regularly asked for is, can you dump this from prod and load it into dev? So if we then load it into dev, do we then have the prod database pointing at Azure and the dev database pointing at Azure for the archive structure? No. <laughs> Great question, no. Because the way you're going to have to set this up, does dev have, does dev have remote um, data archive set up on it. That's the first thing you have to do. You have to reconfigure your server to set this up. And by the way, not something SQL Compare picks up, so that whoever's going to ask the question. So please ask for server compare. I keep, I keep asking, I keep asking. Someday I'm going to get it. I want it so bad. <laughs> Wouldn't it? Go outside and tell them. All of you collectively. Just <laughs> go and tell them. So you reconfigure, and it sets up the server to make that change. And then I create the table. I have to alter the table and then tell it remote is on. Now, if I move my database locally with this, I haven't done that. I'm not sure what will happen. Huh. Good test. I'll have to test that. You just give me a blog post. Thank you. I love blog posts. That's another thing about questions. It gives me blog posts. And so that's re the reason I beg for questions is because it just gives me, gives me a new blog post all the time. I don't know what would happen if we restore that. Huh. OK, cool. No, I don't know. Um, and I'm not going to run compare, guys, because it won't fail. It just doesn't, nothing happens. It's not magic. Are we OK with that? Awesome. This is kind of cool. Wait, don't you guys have data generator and does that for you? Yeah, but we're modifying the data, which is good, frankly. Um, has anybody here heard my story about emails? Has anybody heard that story? I bet you guys have heard it. OK, I'll, t I'll tell my, my, my data modification story and the reason masking data is so very important. I had a developer um, who asked me for a copy of production. And being a good DBA, I said, yeah and gave it to him. Being a stupid DBA, I gave it to him. I did not clean the data first using, say, you know, um, um, SQL Data Generator or some other mechanism, say, data, dynamic data masking. So I just gave him the data. He was working on uh, email automation from our application. And and had a sense of humor, and so was using adult theme images to send emails to our entire customer list. Yeah, that was a fun conversation. So data masking is kind of important, right? There's a whole slew around it. The whole thing is, is this new thing is dynamic data masking, where you set up a set of securities, and it will modify the data as you go. It does not affect storage. It doesn't change the way the data is stored. And this is great for live data, for a production system, for example. A dev system, you would actually still want to go back to Redgate and modify the data. Because if you're just giving devs a copy of the data, are you also restricting their security to the same as it would be in production? Nope. 
And therefore, they bypass the dynamic data masking and send porn to your entire customer list. Don't do that. Trust me on that one. I didn't get fired. More amazingly, he didn't get fired. But we had long conversations with management. I don't like long conversations with management. I like short conversations with management. Hi. <laughs> right? That's all I need. Good question. Will dynamic data masking work with secondary data in a, in a dynamic, in, a, in, a, in an availability group? Short answer, yes. Longer answer, you need to make sure that you set up the security such that it works. All right, so we're going to create my mask table. And you mask with a function. So right, mask with function. And I've got this little function I created called email that cleans up my email so that people can't see it. And so if I insert into that, I want to, I want to demo this one live. So I've got, you know, Herman, Eddie, and Grandpa Munster. Oh, hang on, I'm on the wrong database. Come on. OK. Oh, duh. Thank you. Didn't see that. All right, so now I've got the data in there. And if I select from it, obviously, I got five minutes, right? Oh, we're over? Say something. <laughs> I have to set up the security. So to answer your question, the security has to be set up such that it works. I'm going to I'm used to the, one of the contained database commands, create user without login, and then grant select against that, and then say execute as, and select from that mask table, and then revert. And now you'll see down below my little function. Herman, Eddie, and Grandpa are gone, right? And it's just a little function that I wrote. Yes? Is that a SQL Server? 2016. So, performance over large data sets? <laughs> large data sets? If it's doing scans, I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I mean, that's a function, right? It's, it's doing behavior to the, row by row, effectively. So, be very careful. It does require the security setup, but it will work with availability groups as long as you've got the thing set up. SQL prompt, SQL compare, both support SQL 2016, both support Azure. Um, and the cloudy future that we're in is um, pretty much going on. Um, and so I didn't realize I was five minutes over. I lost track of time. Thank you very much. Off you go. <laughs>